to Magnus Mullinen with eight life enhancing S's. Free for life. Magnus is, amongst other things, qualified in metabolic typing. He's interested in helping people live toward their potentials. First by teaching us what nourishes the body, both physically and mentally, and encourage us to make the necessary changes to achieve this. So, we must do something for ourselves. Real health isn't automatic or brought about by pharmaceutical products. Magnus has a way of reminding us what we could do to benefit the only body we've got. Papers and pens at the ready, Magnus Mulliner. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Donna with this on. I've probably even got some curves in the same place. Um, for those who are familiar with my work, hands up who anyone who's been to any of my presentations before. Half and half, very slightly more. Thank you. Okay. Um, there is a new edition, and uh, nearly 43 years young, I thought I'd start with a picture like that. Um, it's all about community, and I get the feeling with what we shared before, uh, coming together with the information. Uh, it is challenging for those to turn off their televisions, perhaps, and stop reading uh, tabloid newspapers. That's an invite. I haven't done that for many years. Whenever I go to my parents' house, they're always... And I can't compete with that, because I don't read the Daily Mail, and I don't watch what goes on in the news. That's not to say that I'm ignorant to other things, but they're not important to me, who's with who and what's going on. And then as you know, the media is controlled by three main bodies, so they'll tell you what they want you to know. Before I kind of get started though, what I want to do is, as always, for those that have been to my presentations, ask permission. What's the reason for being here? What would you like to receive? Kindly, your time is as precious as anyone else's. What would you like to receive this evening? What's the reason for being here? Enlightenment. 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 Okay. It's probably a journey that one, but thank you. Anyone else? What's the reason for being here? What would you like to receive? Focus. 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 So much going on. Great creative knowledge. This is just to prompt me to go through them, you guys. That's all right. Yeah. How to achieve a nutritional balance for the body of something like that? Balance. It's funny because this is probably going to be one of the few uh, presentations I give where actually. Talk about food. <laughs> but detox. Inspiration. Inspiration. You won't get that from the Daily Mound. Anyone else? Usually the rebels are kept at the uh, 
the front and the keen ones at the back. What's the reason for being here? What would you like to receive? Enlightenment. He's still going. <laughs> He's still going. <laughs> <laughs> it's a state of mind. It's not perfection. It's a, it's a place where you can perceive what is priority. Right. I have met some enlightened beings, and I find that they he could like them into their own little planet. But the first thing that I find, which is towards enlightenment, is not to form a judgment. And that's one of the toughest things that anyone in this room would do, because you're going to judge me how I look, walk, talk, and all the rest of it. No, we're not. We think you're a sweet. <laughs> that's a judgment. <laughs> Whether I'm good, bad or ugly, they're all judgments. And one of the things you can do to move towards that, because I've, I've read a few books and I've attended a few programs, so there's one you can do, it's called a Satori. Who's the hands up? How many people have heard of a Satori? Just the one? Two? Well, do some homework on anything I remind you here. A Satori is uh, an event where you go, uh, I don't want to steal the thunder for it, you spend moments with other people and you're invited on a journey to find your truth. So you're not buying into any mantas, any dogmas or anything like that. And my example, when I was in Alberta attending a Satori, tell me who you are. And so it's backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, with lots of different people all the time. And eventually, wham! Something comes up. My enlightenment bit was, I don't give a shit what you think about me. But that was a lie. Because I do. Because every single person in this room it's alright, you keep moving around. Every single person in this room behaves in a fashion to gain approval from others. I'll say that again, very differently. Every single person in this room either dresses, talks, walks, behaves in a certain fashion to gain approval from others. And, as an addendum to that, some of these people you try and gain approval from can't even stand. And you probably even, let's label them, hate them. And yet you're still there trying to gain are we being serious? Being serious is passion, and then it kills people. And that's why we're in there. I'll try to move into Libya. Let's not be serious about it. Enlightenment is a journey as far as I'm concerned, and don't get stuck there. Okay, anyone else before I suddenly open the doors and remind you people the eight essential S's that will enhance your quality of life and cost you absolutely no thing? Nothing. Going once? The liver. The liver. Very important talk. It's the second biggest one in the body. Freedom. Now that's an interesting one. A lot of people, they will focus on this, but what they're trying to do is become free from. And that's the problem, because there's a difference between freedom and free from. Trying to avoid things. But freedom, I believe, well, I point to this, where is the mind? Some, the Buddhist states here, some people, I don't know. But freedom, to be mindful of, or if you're trying to be free from, or do you believe that you are free? Because you do have moments where you are. I'll go through these S's. I've got an honest moment for you, and some of the questions I ask are going to be rhetorical. How many of you people are happy with the way you look and feel? Hands up. Be honest. How many people? Excellent. Those that put your hand up, you will find are putting less nails in your coffin. And we all have that. Yeah? <laughs> nails. Is that what he needs coffers? Exactly on time. Fighting that illusion of reality causes stress. Everything that I'm really going to talk about, and it is an invite, is for you to, um, I always ask this question, is it possible or is it okay if I ask permission and challenge some of your beliefs and values? And everyone in the room always says yes and they smile at me. <laughs> is that true? We'll find out. As a former academic, I've got to do it. I'm not going to insult your intelligence and read these. What I will say to you is that if you would like a copy of this, then please send me an email. The details are on the bottom there. Magnesa MT Energy. MT is for metabolic typing, and energy is just a play on word. It's an IE at the end instead of a Y dot com. You probably didn't think this. There is an exam before you people vacate, and. Um, 
I'm going to give you homework now. Is that okay? I'm asking permission. <laughs> I'm not going to teach you anything, but I am going to remind you of some of these easy to follow ideas which will, in my opinion, reverse your telomere lengths. Who's heard of telomeres? Hands up. Okay, quite a few people. You can liken them on, on these at the end of your shoelaces. You know when you get some shoelaces, a little plastic bit about that long. And over time, as you wear your trainers, your shoes, and all, they get eroded away. Well, you tell them, tell me, is it connected to the end of your DNA strands? And obviously, as we age, environmental or poor lifestyle choices, they shorten. And so how long are you going to live ultimately is down to your telomeres. Now that I've mentioned that, when you're reading your daily mail, you may come, or whatever, you may come across it, or you're on media. What I find, and I, I don't mean to swear when I say this, but it ultimately it's about taking responsibility. I'm glad no one's That's what it is. That's what health truly is, taking responsibility. Just the other day, I was standing in line, as you do in the post office, I've heard this lady talking about bouncing from one doctor, didn't like the answer she got there, to another doctor, didn't like the answer, and so on. And to me it was like she was playing the part of the victim and not taking responsibility for her own health and well-being. And I wasn't in a position to say anything, apart from pass out compassionate and empathic love to her. The lady was about similar age to me, she was about 70 odd. Um, but still, taking responsibility, if anything happens to you, it is your responsibility for tripping on the curb, except when it comes to fracking, which we know about and we can vote. Is this true? Joe Panhow once said, all truth passes three stages. First, we laugh at it. Secondly, when it comes to the fracking, perhaps that's where you are here. And then finally, it's accepted as self-evident. Most things you will find will go through those three stages. Most people I do find are in this situation here, surviving, getting through the day, rather than thriving. I work with many people throughout the globe. I have paperwork this thick I ask them to fill out, and one of the main things I want to do is seek to understand what's going on up here. And there's only two ways really I know to control your state of mind. One is how quickly you move, and the other way is by what you're thinking what you're paying attention to. Remember, where your intention goes, energy flows. And if it's true what uh, Dr. Deepak Chopra once said, we think between 60 and 68,000 thoughts a day, and up to 90% can be negative. Although some of that is ancestral. So there's a lot of sneaky thinking going on. However, when you're awake and enlightened, you can perhaps interrupt your pattern and change. In other words, whether you're shaving, or whatever you shave, you will find you are asking yourself two primary questions. What does this mean and what shall I do? But for some people it's like, I can't believe she said that. I can't believe they did that. Do I have to go to work, etc.? How do you feel? This is about you and your state of mind. Interrupt your pattern, change it. What's funny about that situation? So you can control your state of mind instantly by how quickly you move, whether you move quickly or slowly, and what you paid attention to, what you're thinking about. Welcome, we're gonna talk about the eight. <laughs> how you think, act, and feel. These are habits, we're very good at this. How many of you, you saw the picture of my uh, young family. I think that's how I'm gonna perpetuate my youth by having another child, no, that's it, no more. Second time, I'm not passionate with my wife and I paid the price. So what happened? So, how many of you people actually do this though? Or, as I mentioned before, is it this? Because in order to form this, you've got to try and do this. And, and the greatest teachers I have, and you saw the picture, are my kids, because I spend a little bit more time than other kids, because we're all children. Carry the persona of an adult, we might even dress like one, but we're all children. To the degree that we forget that, was is a stress. My wife will remind me because sometimes I behave like I'm 16. So we want to control and predict things. We want to do that with the weather, we want to do that with our counsellors, we want to do that with the fracking. When all the time we're trying to control and predict, it doesn't mean not to do anything rather than just sensing and observing because with that you're then more enlightened and empowered to make smarter choices. 
But most of us live in the react. And if you find yourself reacting at any time, the mind is split into two parts. You are going into what's called the subconscious. So we just be mindful of this. So here's part of the homework. Well, what you can do when you leave here, rather than trying to do this about your husband, your wife, your respective other, just sit back and watch. Like a fly on the wall. Does that make sense? It's part of it, right? Yeah. Good. So in which case there'll be no judgments and no more nails going in your coffin and you will live up to 120, 130 years young. <laughs> this is the first one. So here's the invite and here's the homework. And this is the greatest challenge I find with people because no one wants to be told S-H-I-T. But they do want to hear what they already know. Is that true? As soon as you wake up, as soon as you turn on your, I call it like a computer, you know when you turn your computer, you go through the ramifications, as soon as you wake up and you start to become conscious, all you've got to do is smile. And what I mean by that, because remember this is controlling your physiology. Remember I mentioned before, there's two ways of controlling how you feel. One way is your movement. And just by turning your mouth at the side, that costs you absolutely nothing, instantly you will start to feel good. But for most of us, we're stuck with our mouths doing that because we're thinking about what the government's doing or next door neighbour or the person you work with and so on. And please remember this if nothing else. Anything and everything that occurs in your life is but a reflection of you and your level of enlightenment and consciousness. So if you do not like what you see, hear, feel, and those are just some of the senses that we have, that's because there's less peace more peace, more peace out there. So our external is a reflection of what's going on internally. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah? Do tell me if I come up with some profound sagacity on nefarious proclivities, which you don't understand. I, I, I want you to understand. It's simple, basic stuff. It's not, not, none of this is complicated. Children, there was some research I read years ago, laugh over 300 times a day. Be honest with yourself. How many times do you laugh per day? It costs you nothing and makes you feel good. Who's heard of oxytocin? Yeah? Giving people hugs, I must have given a few since I've been here. I felt good this just walking into the place. Stop laughing. And that's when you look in the mirror, and that is enlightenment. There you go. Laugh at yourself. Stop taking your life too fucking seriously. I nearly swallowed it, but I didn't because my wife said you've got to behave yourself this evening. So just be aware of how many times you do this. And what you focus on, laughter. It's like wearing a pair of glasses, and, and I, I've, done, I've done it before, I've got something out. Should we? Somebody in the audience who would like to demonstrate this. Somebody close to the back who can prove one point, who's never been to any of my presentations. Who can put their hand up before? This will be fun. Come on out. Let's have fun. Come on, come on out. Anyone? Yeah, great. Thank you very much. Give this man a round of applause for his showing up. Okay. This is just an example of what happens in your life every single day. Think your name? John. Okay, turn on the face of the audience, please. Okay. What colour is that? Floor uh, colour. Yeah, what colour is it? Yeah, brown. Brown. Okay, what I want you to do quickly, I'm going to give you six seconds just to look around the room. Now, if there's anything, everything that you can see is the colour brown. Quick, 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 quick six, six seconds. Look around and behind you, everything that's brown that you can see. Quick, quick, quick. Yeah. And close your eyes. Okay. Now, what I want everyone else in the audience to do is just to remain quiet. And please don't cheat, okay? I'm going to ask you in a moment to run through in the order and sequence that you saw everything that there was the colour blue with your eyes closed. We've got to open your eyes, okay? So everything that you saw in the room that was the colour blue, keep your eyes closed. Keep your eyes shut. Keep your eyes shut, you can do that. Okay. With your eyes shut, you mean anything and everything in the room that you saw that was the colour green? Anything that you saw that was the colour green? Okay, with your eyes shut then, give me anything, anything that you saw in the room that was the colour red. The church. Well done, keep your eyes shut, that's fantastic. Anything else? Uh, the fire door. The fire door. Okay, keep your eyes shut. Give me a colour, anyone from the audience that you would like this gentleman to find. White. Anything that you saw in the room was white. Well done. Nobody's not, it's very sharp, but this is also going on memory. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
What about anything in the room that you saw, this will really throw out, African violet, purple? I think it could. Okay. Um, yellow? Uh, no. Okay. What I want you to do is to open your eyes and notice anything and everything in the room that is the colour green. Anything that you can see is green. Point it out to me. Mm. Anything that's green with your eyes open. Got a few green tops here. First aid box over there. There are some flowers over there, actually. I'll put that in the fake ones. Yeah, box. green box. Okay. Anything in the room that you saw that was red, you got spot on for that. Anything that you saw that was, um, um, I said African violet, but there is. There's African violet. It's, one of my postcards was a rough brown. If you ever said, if you ever said purple, you get slapped. It's African violet, beautiful colour. It's actually to do with creativity. I used to have a band with that. So colours are not vibrations. <laughs> uh, blue. What's blue in the room? Because the green and the blue, thank you, the, blue, the green and the blue is what's alive and living. Yeah? In our lives. But my point is here, and I want to thank you for this. Grab a seat. <laughs> if there was, what happens is we wear these glasses and we only focus on the uh, feces, that's brown, of life. The crap, the shit. And how do we feel? And who's doing it? Whenever you point, three fingers point back. So it's another moment to become and start to wake up. So in the morning, the invite is for you is to smile. And you'll go, well, Magnus, I've got nothing to smile about. I would challenge that. Firstly, you're alive and you're breathing, and so on. So all you need to do, if, and this is the second part of your homework, I haven't read this written down, so you can write this down, is to, before you go to bed, write down all the things you're grateful for. Just ten things. Ten things that you're grateful for. Because when you do this, you are changing your frequency and your vibration, you will find that when you wake up in the morning, you've probably got less FUs about the government, the fracking, and whatever else. These things go on and you can still vote. Where you put your eyes, your ears, and your feet, and your money, you can still vote, and your pen. We know that everything in our life is about balance. Anything and everything is. And to the degree that it's out of balance, then Houston, we have a problem. These are just some of the uh, technical terms which you may or may not heard of. We talked about this. When you hug somebody, this is what's released. It makes you feel really good. And endorphins are, you know, people have like, um, get addicted to exercise. Yeah? I don't know if I even imagine that. Well, it's because of this endorphin release. It can subdue you all the pains and all the challenges, just like running away and avoiding yourself. I'm not saying don't do it, but everything is about balance, yin and yang, masculine and feminine. What could you do to brighten your day? So if you ask yourself the question, what could I do to brighten my day? Because you may wake up still with one, you, you, you know, like this. What could I do to, that's a smart question. And if you get stuck anywhere in life, get stuck in the question. Yeah? I often say don't get stuck anywhere, but if you can get stuck in a question, make sure it's a good question though. So break your day. And when you do this, if you start doing more of this, I call it a side effect in this because as you know, there are, there are no such things as side effects. It's not socially acceptable to buy a, buy a toxic chemical, you can buy your doctor and so on. There only are effects. And it can be contagious, you can pass it on. And this is what it does, and that's what a lot of my work is about, is empowering people to boost their immune system. In the words of Hans Christian King, and this applies to everyone in the room, including myself, you've got to get over yourself and you've got to get out of your way. Get over yourself and get out of your way. And too many of us are tripping over ourselves with our thinking and our thought pattern. See, I'm talking about enlightenment here. Don't interrupt. <laughs> can I move on from that? I wanted to be interactive. I want to didactically just stand here and remind you people. Does this make sense then? Smile. And the more often you do it, it does become a habit and you get good at it. But, and here's the other addendum, without an expectation that somebody else will as well. Because that means if they don't, you suddenly then go into judgment. Oh, miserable. Beep. Let that go. Second thing, hands up how many people sing every day? Do you? Excellent. How does it make you feel? Fantastic. 
sick. Absolutely it does. It costs you absolutely freaking nothing. I know some of you men go, you don't want to hear me singing. You're probably right. I probably don't. And neither does anyone else. However, you will find that once you start training your voice like Pavarotti did, it will change your frequency. From a quantum physics point of view, we are vibrations of light. We're just wavelengths. And you will change that by finding that within your own. Um, and all you've got to do is sing. I don't care if it's Demis Roussos, if it's Abba, Nana Muscuri, I don't care. As long as it's, I have some time to, I've got to be honest, I sing Christopher sometimes, and not Lady in Red. That's a very poor example. Although he got to the board, it's a very bad example of his work. I don't pay the ferryman, don't even fix the same price. Who's heard of the, the, the Christopher? He ran off with his, yeah, okay. <laughs> Who reads the Daily Mail? <laughs> Um, so, the invite, after you wake up in the morning, turn on your computer, you smile, I call it this your computer, because you often bang in the question, and, oh, why am I so fat? Because I eat continuously, have no self-control, stupid question. Okay, so you're going to change that. Oh, I, I mentioned this, another ten quick, um, as part of your homework, if you could create ten empowering questions, just write them down, it's part of your homework, it's going to be in the exam as well. Ten questions that make you feel good. So it could be as simple as what's funny about that. Because more often than not, we're always looking at it. Oh, God. That's not good. Oh, I've lost out. Or whatever. So what's actually funny about that situation? What could I do right now which will bring me closer to enlightenment, make me feel good, and make me loads of money? Yeah? An empowering question. Because it makes you feel good. So you create those 10 questions. So in any one moment, when you feel that 90% of the stinking thinking is going on, which we all do, interrupt your pattern. So shower, shaving, driving, we don't talk about that because we're British. This is what you're going to do, you're going to start singing. And of course, everything ultimately is about hormones. I've just got back from London, I've been on a training program down there to understand how this functions fully, integrated in a few tests that I can now perform. Um, and that will affect these, and hormones are just how strong your bones are, your neurotransmitters, everything ultimately is controlled by these guys, and there are stack loads of them. And they release when you smile and you sing. Diaphragm, yes. Those are just some ideas. This is a fact though. Not the size of what you might think, but your lungs will determine the length or the time you have on this planet. So for those that have ever seen a person who's passing away leaving this dimension, <gasps> very shallow chest breathing, yeah? So, invite, by doing this, this is why to some extent a lot of smokers, the only thing that relaxes them is the deep breathing. I like people who <gasps> no, I don't mean that. I mean expansion from here first, because two thirds of your lungs are here, one third most of us, as time goes on, we become chest breathers. So the size of your lungs. It's all over now. I think we had it a few weeks ago, last summer. Absolutely key, if you can, and, it, and again, it is an invite, get to know somebody in Portugal and go over there and have fun for at least a week during the winter. My parents go away for three months every single year and they go to Spain. And every time they come back and they compete with me on the ground front. I just told them I haven't washed, but they have. So the simple thing is, the sun has UVA and B. And it's UVB which strikes cholesterol, stop me if I get too technical, and then goes through a few more processes that will convert it into vitamin D. D3, colicalciferol. And that has been labelled as a sterile hormone in some areas, and there's other, to like say it isn't. However, it can affect over 2,000 of your genes, positively, and, as well as use of magnesium, it does so many wonderful things, makes you feel good as well. Um, some stats here, isn't there? Look at that. Of all, there are over 200 different forms of label, because obviously once you've got a label, it comes with a drug. Just by having enough of this, or using, that's the best source. However, if you can't run away for three months like my parents did, then get hold of some good D3. D3. 
the, the most bioavailable is usually in a liquid form. You can go to this thing here, I don't have any shares in it, grassrootshealth.org, or you can go for more information on the Vitamin D Council to do more due diligence, and you will find that you can buy your own test kit. You can go to your doctor, and if you do go to the doctor, they use a different measurement. And so your, it's not called nanograms per milliliter, uh, but it needs to be between 75 and 105. But if you use going to this company here, you can buy this. You can buy this and things online. It's just a prick. And the other thing, there are 30, 34 scientists who are connected to this organisation that know that this is, we're in crisis in a lot of the areas, especially those in the Northern Hemisphere, because we don't have the sun. And the best time to get the sun is between 10 and 2, which if you read the, the Daily Mail, I can tell you that's not a good time, because you could get skin cancer. And yet some doctors work with people with skin cancer, getting them in the sun. Let me think about that. So listen to the doctor within. Foods. These are obviously some foods. Um, I used to like wild Alaskan salmon, but soon that will have um, Fukushima on there because we've um, Japanese radiation. Um, mindful of using smaller fish. And as I say, don't burn. So if you go somewhere exotic, which I know most of you do, then Cover up and don't burn yourself. And if you are, and the gentleman over to my left, his right, slightly darker than me, then you need to times that by 10, how much in the sun. So for those of us that are Caucasian, it could be 10 minutes, 15 minutes with the sun overhead. This is a tip that if your shadow is longer than you are tall, UVB will not convert into vitamin D. I'll say that again. If, you, if your shadow is longer than you are tall, it won't convert. But if you have darker skin, you'll need to spend longer in the sun. Any questions with that? Does that make sense? I'll say it costs you nothing. It might cost you if you go on holiday somewhere. He said say no to sunscreen. Say no to sunscreen. <laughs> did I have that on my previous slide? I didn't put that on my did I? No, okay. Oh, that's an interesting one. 8% being deficient in it. Sunscreen. Just read the label. Here's what my tip is. If nothing else is even remember this. It comes in the exam. I think it's on question number 36. Do not apply anything to the biggest organ on your body unless you would eat it. Think about it, folks. Up to 60% of what you apply to your skin will be absorbed. So, gentlemen, brute, if you wouldn't do that, don't even think of doing that. Women, sometimes a lot past it balls me over when you're walking down the street and the perfume of some women. And usually it's because they've got some serious health challenges, whether they've got... Uh, I was going to say alopecia or something else. Halitosis, bad breath, um, and because of the, not the um, stomach and small intestines and the large intestines not functioning properly, they'll also give off other smells. They might have food trapped in their mouths or whatever because they've had their molars removed. Whatever the situation is, they'll go with the perfume. So unless you eat it, please do not apply it on the biggest organ on your body. That can save your life. Just that little tip it alone. Emotion is created by motion. As I mentioned before, whether you choose to do Tai Chi, yoga, Pilates, whatever it is, this movement will, well, movement is life, will energize you. When I say that, if you move quickly and you feel tired, you move too quickly. That wasn't the right speed for you. But I think everyone in the room could start up and could do Tai Chi movements, go to a Tai Chi class or a yoga class or what have you, and you will live longer. Do some gardening. Yeah? Any of these movements, because what normally happens is once you retire, you then put more nails in your coffin because you become less active and, then, oh, and all of a sudden you, you know, you, your grandkids and all start being a complete servant. Oh, it's all right, grandma, you don't need to get up, we'll get it for you. No, get up and move around. Movement is life. I've got to be in there somewhere. It's in the exam. So these are just some ideas of things you can do. But my tip is if, if you find that you feel tired afterwards, then you worked at a too high intensity. Sperm count dropped by watching, there you go, lovely research, Journal of Sports Medicine. We were, as I say, designed to move, and I don't care how young you are, quick movements will extend your life. Now obviously, if you haven't done any quick movements, you might want to have a family friend or ask the doctor or what have you, build up slowly. But for someone like myself, I'll just go out the door, sprint down and come back and I feel energized. And at 43 years young, or seem to be this year, that works for me. But then I've been doing exercise for, well, a quarter of a century now. So movement. 
Oh, I did mention diet. Who wanted some balance with the food? Well, I've got to say about the food is that anything that has a shelf life does not have a self life. If it comes in a tin and you feed it to your dog or your cat, you're killing your dog or your cat. Why? Because it doesn't have all the nutrients required. My parents have some cats, they feed it raw liver and raw kidney. That's what they live on. Now and again, they might get some chicken scraps. So, turn back the clock, what have we been eating? Look at our teeth, the hole that goes from that to that, because it's just all tubes that go through. You will find that we've been, from um, fruitarians, we've been eating fruits, we've been eating vegetables, and we've been eating meat. And if we didn't eat meat, our brains wouldn't be as big as they are. So, you need to find the balance of the right macronutrients of fats, proteins, and carbs. The amount of meat or fish you put, or um, poultry on your plate, mixed with your vegetables and fruit. <laughs> if you're a vegetarian, then you need to have an extreme variety of vegetables and fruits because usually you'll be short on amino acids, you'll be deficient in B12, you'll be deficient in zinc, and you'll be deficient in iron, eventually, if not now, Nuts and seeds, yeah, they do, but they don't contain all the amino acids, and you need to have variety in. Um, there's a great article I can pass on to you about spiritual stuff and everything, because this is where a lot of people, are not, not people are vegetarians and vegans, you make your own choices with the information you have. We all do the best we can with the tools we have. There's far more death and destruction goes on to feed the plants than we could even think of creating on land, and I'm not condoning the stuff that goes on with the animals and all the rest of it. Get to know your local farmers, Think globally, but act locally. But I'm just saying, you know as much as I do with the soils and the, the parasites killing the fungi and everything else just so the plant can survive, there's far more goes on there. So people who are vegetarians and vegans, I don't think they're fully aware of that. So killing and destruction and everything else, it's a cycle of life. It's how it's done. And of course it's natural when it's down in the soil and becomes so on land perhaps. So right. get to know the local farmers. Well, it is, but I think also we need to get to know your farmer. Where is farmer? He's not here today. Farmer? He wants to be killed tonight. Okay. Yeah. Oh, right. Thank you, sir. Brilliant. Nice to see you. Yeah. Support your local farmers. As I say, think globally, act locally. Get to know them. Find out how they treat their animals. What do they put on their on their land to feed the animals? Simple stuff that we've kind of lost as we've no longer become part of a calm unity community. So diet is key. However, as we all know, if your stomach, the pH is not as low as that or that, then no matter how good orgasmic or whatever the fuel is you put in, the body's still going to be suffering. So okay, it's going to be suffering from things like um, enzyme deficiency and also B12 as an example. This one would be complex. Unless the pH goes down as low as one or two in the stomach then it's not going to break down and transfer across the intestinal wall. So, without getting too technical on the diet side, certainly put in the right fuel, but just be aware there are simple tests that you can have to make sure that the pH is right, your zinc levels are, and all the rest of it. Don't guess, but measure. We all know about this, we all know about these are forms of addiction. The reason why we form addiction is because our friends do not answer us back. Me and my mates, me and my, yeah. So, these substances, or whatever that we get addicted to, they don't answer back. They don't tell you that sex was bad last night, and why didn't you send me some money in the mail? So they become our friends. Yeah? <laughs> now, I'm not saying because you smoke or you drink, you're addicted, because an addiction is a repeated process that does not get your desired results. That's what a true addiction is. What I am saying is that the reason why people become addicted to these things is because it's me and my friend. Me and my mate. My time. But when you cut something out in their life, because once the meaning changes, which it may do eventually, what's it going to be filled with? I've got to have something like that, a glass of water, whatever. You've got to, there's a void created, it needs to be filled with something. If you do feel a bit of stress, then all I can recommend you do is start breathing fully and deeply. And so if you catch yourself breathing here, start breathing there. And practice it. Remember, practice is the mother of skill. And it costs you absolutely nothing. When I find I work with people and they do say to me they want to give these up, I find out what their big dream goals are. So when you can focus on that, 
whether it's swinging a golf club or their grandchildren or whatever, and you can make that link, the meaning of that will then outcome this. So that will suddenly equal pain and pleasure to spending more time with their grandkids. Just think about it. This and a lot of this. Well, that, that's the leading cause of death on the planet, and it certainly will be by 2020 stress. Stinking thinking, people not controlling. Because let me just repeat, there are zero problems outside of the mind. Zero problems. And if there is a problem in your life, or if you've got an issue, you're a victim. None of the people in this room, none of you are victims. You may have a challenge, and with the challenge is an opportunity for you to overcome it. Just change the meaning. Exercise and habits. Moving on. How many of you people do have a passion? How many of you people read and study? Brilliant. This is what will assist you in your journey to, I say longevity, it's not about how long you live, it's your quality of life. Because sometimes I ask my class, could you imagine living to 100? I'm like, no. Because their focus is usually when you get to about 70, 80 or 90, something starts falling off or something goes gammy or change that mindset. What would you do if you're not afraid? These are some rhetorical questions. Because a lot of this stuff holds people back. And the reason it does is because you and I have been programmed by our parents. By age seven, pretty much our behavior, I mean, I see it myself. If I get angry with my son, because he won't do, I'm trying to control and predict, remember, rather than sense and observe, I suddenly go into child mode. And when I wake up and realize that, I'll stop being angry instantly. Because I don't like being a child some of the time. <laughs> Maybe all the time, and my wife's and I am a big kid. So study, find what your passion and your purpose. So often when I work with people, I ask them, what is your true passion and purpose? And you might be a doctor, you might be a, um, climbing the corporate ladder, uh, being an accountant, whatever else, but they're living their parents' dream because in order to be successful, how's success measured? How much money in the bank and climbing the corporate ladder? I would challenge both of those. However, they're living their dream. So you need to find what works for you. What would you do if you're not afraid? If money wasn't a challenge, if you enjoyed doing something that did not lead to, I'll use the term because you understand it, but there's no such meaning, failure, what would you choose to do? There's no such thing as failure. And when you start asking these questions, you start saying, well, you know what, I'd be interested in working on some boats. I've got one guy who said, well, I want to design um, guitars. Well, what was stopping you? Himself. So you need to find what your true passion and purpose. And the only constant in this universe is, thank you, Leon, change. So it may change. That's part of the feminine energy. We're all feminine, we're all masculine, the way of energies. So what do you love enough to climb out of bed for, apart from your partner in crime, which could be the correct answer? Well, I need the toilet. Right, in that moment, any enlightened being would do that. In that moment. Absolutely, don't take life too seriously, man. <laughs> your physical body is just a print out of what's going on in our minds. Is that true? Find out. Your mind always evaluating, judging, comparing, condemning. Now, if nothing else, this is in this is your exam. You, you guys need to know this stuff, right? These are the five disempowering traits which so many people practice on a regular basis. This one I'm constantly working on. I'm late because of the traffic. That's an excuse. Yeah. So if you catch yourself criticizing, complaining, worrying or fearing or gossiping or excuse making, freaking stop yourself. You're disempowering yourself. Yeah? What's wrong with it? There's nothing wrong with it from an enlightened point of view. In my opinion, you are giving away your power to others. Don't do it. To the degree that you want to, Get closer to. <laughs> I find with the, you know, all these are just labels. You know if you're in your power when you're doing this. There's a classic doctor, the late Dr. Stephen Covey. Who's ever Stephen Covey? wrote The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. He wrote The Eighth Habit, is one of his other books. He's written many books on putting first things first. Dr. Stephen Covey said, Never ever speak ill of those absent, for you will lose those present. So if somebody comes up to me and they're bad-mouthing somebody, that tells me nothing about the individual they're bad-mouthing, nothing whatsoever. It tells me about them and their state of being. I'm not saying that they're lying and it's not truthful what they're saying, but it tells me nothing about the individual and everything about them. It's part of taking responsibility. 
This makes sense, yeah? So when you catch yourself doing any of these things, instead of doing this, which is closer to that, which again will release more oxytocin than all the other things, interrupt your pattern. You knew it was going to come up, didn't you? Tell me you knew this is one of the S's. <laughs> the gentleman over there is not smiling. Oh, there he is. Good. He hadn't read the first word. He is right now. We were born from an act of sex. I cried out, I'm not British, I'll talk about it. The door's going to be closed and the lights have to be turned out. How freaking boring. There are some stats here. If you're between this age, which nobody is in the room except me, that's how many times a year I have sex. And if I'm between that and that, I go, oh my lord. Jesus, I've got to be honest. <laughs> uh, 69 times. It is one of those main pleasures, but we get so keyed up about it. What is going on? And obviously it's one of the first things that's compromised in our libido. So for men, if you're not getting an erection around about 5 o'clock or between 4 o'clock and 5 o'clock in the morning, assuming that you're still awake, you might wake up with a, with a stiffy, then we've got a whole lot of challenges going on. It's one of the first things to go. Because Mother Nature said, I don't want you reproducing because you're not healthy. So hormones are everything, but if I could offer any form of advice, and please remember this, the best advice you can take is your own. But if I could offer any advice to you men, do not fix women's problems. Why? Because they're not broken and they don't need fixing. Because it's a Neanderthal man. I've been part of the men's tribe in Calgary for over two years, learning from the wisdom of men. I did my men's weekend in New York in 2005. Alpha leadership, legacy discovery, lots of men's stuff. As men, and what's said there stays there, and what we did as well stays there, we kind of have problem-solution mentality. That's a man in his masculine. Problem-solution, yeah? Well, you've seen a woman who's on the phone, and she's on the phone for an hour, and you go, what was the point of that conversation? And of course it was the conversation, a woman in her family. A man can do the same thing. I'd seen a friend for 22 years. I found him I was on the phone for less than seven minutes. Great, fine, no problem. See you then, bye. Done. A man in his masculine. However, it's about balance again. So, if you're a woman working in the bank, wearing trousers, climbing the corporate ladder, there's north, there's south, that's you. There's your husband, there's north, there's south. You come home, uh oh, repel. Without an expectation that you've uh, dimmed the lights, you've run some water, you put some orgasmic salts in the water, maybe you've lit some a few candles as well, and that she will go in and give her a massage free, yeah? that she will go into a feminine and then change the polarity. Now you can also go into your feminine, but you can play with these energies and they're beautiful. So please men, don't fix your problem, not broken, just become a great king listener. Well, my wife and I'm driving along, she tells me, gives me directions. Instantly it's like press that red. Can you, can, can, can you relate to this men? Yeah? Give a toll what to do? So, if you're a woman, please do not tell your mom, invite them, oh, honey, right? You know, use humour, whatever. But please do not suddenly take on the masculine, in the masculine. That's just a, one example. If you would like to learn more about these energies, I'll invite you on a journey to read David Dada's work. That's D-E-I-D-A, David Dada. One of his books is called Dear Lover. Dear, Dear Lover. Intimate Communion is another great book. I've studied over nine of his programs in Canada. Another great book is The Way of the Superior Man. And I recommend women read it as well. The Way of the Superior Man, great book. Explains about the energies. It talks about how it was with the Archie book group, Stage One Man. Comes home, where's my food, woman? Slippers by the door, yeah? Stage One. All spine, but no heart. And the woman's going, you're not going to have this to the left, you know, it's just the play to play is so negative. Stage two, man and woman, they sit down and they discuss, do you think we can touch one another now? <laughs> is it okay? Stage two is far better than stage one. And a stage three man obviously has a spine and a heart, and obviously is a great, because you and I all know that it's far easier to do this than it is to shut up and to listen without offering solutions. So those are just some examples. One of my mentors is a Kung Fu master called Satyam, Satyam Raja, and he studied a lot of um, David Dana's work, and I've read, as I said, most of his books. Fantastic man, incredible man. It's, uh, you can watch a few YouTube to him, actually. Right, I would like to end on sex. 
because we're going to have a tea break. 15, 20 minutes. So I do, I am conscious that I do want to run through some of these. Some of these things I, I may not touch on. The liver is the second biggest organ in the body. And obviously if this is affected, then the liver is. And if this isn't functioning properly, then the bile's not going to be working properly. Your kidneys are going to be out of sync. So there are things you can do about it. Like milk thistle is there not to detoxify, but to strengthen the liver. That's something that can be useful. But ultimately I want to know, what are you doing which is compromising this? Because that is the main detoxifier in the body. Inspiration. Ask yourself a question. If I could choose to do anything, delete the failure, what I choose to do. Find what your true passion or purpose is in the moment. The body is constantly doing this, it's never not doing that. To detox, what you've got to do is drink more water. You need to breathe properly, you need to think properly, you need to eat properly, you need to sleep properly, you need to do enough creative movement. Those are called the six principles, which if nothing else comes in the exam and is important. How you think, breathe, drink, eat, sleep, and undertake creative movement daily will determine how long you live, period. Creative movement, by the way, is this. Any questions then while we go into the tea break before... One question, Madness. Um, women. What about those who like a bit of dog meat nutrients? A lot of women that like that. Is that what you're asking? No. 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 They don't like it. You've got to... This is challenging for a man to do this, but to feel into a woman, rather than asking the question, to feel into her and find out what her needs and requirements are and for you to be of service to. Most men... What's in it for me? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah? So if you can connect with her heart and find out what she requires and where she likes to be touched and all the rest of it, it might just be massaging the feet, it might be an Indian head, whatever, and start on the heart and then you may go somewhere else. But that's, you know, I have no relationship skills, I'll be honest with you. And I get it right one out of ten. But I never take things personally because that's not my job to do that. And I accept my reality and go, in that moment it didn't work, but moments later it may. Yeah? Thank you. Have a little break. <laughs> it's all food for thought and thought for food. So far we've got the four or five that I've covered. Has anyone got any questions um, that I can direct to somebody else? <laughs> Is there anything that um, has come up that you would like to share? And usually when I ask about questions is that if you've got a question you feel everyone will benefit from, there's a difference between being selfish and being self-wise. Yeah? So questions that you and others will benefit from. Oh, shall I just crack on and talk about sex again? There we go. <laughs> there's a very interesting book on, um, free on, on the internet, Magnus, about sex. And it's saying that, uh, that men in, in the warm months should only ejaculate once every five times a minute, and as the year progresses, once every ten. And in the winter, man shouldn't ejaculate at all because it drains all your energy. What do you say about that? Um, well, it does. Have, when you say it drains all his energy, the, the, um, dopamine will drop. A man will become less focused. You zinc. You zinc. <laughs> it's not just about zinc, though. Everything works together. Um, but zinc will be a factor to that, because that's what's needed to, to replenish. But then you've got magnesium, you've got um, chromium, you've got copper. There needs to be a, a balance ratio between ZN and copper. So, it, and what I'm talking about, say, I'm talking about a heart-to-heart -heart connection. I'm not just talking about a wham bam thank you man, what to it for me, Neanderthal type thing. I'm talking about a loving connection with another. And it can be, um, I'm going to talk any further about the same sex or not, but it's just about enjoying what life has to offer. And I do believe that that's something which is part of the eight essential essences that will enhance your quality of life. And generally speaking, as we get older, and I've attended many of these courses, they're called SPE, Sex, Passion and Enlightenment. And it's not about sex, it's understanding the energies, the masculine feminine energies of working with them, with your partner or partners. Um, and it really is exciting. And it makes you feel alive. Um, but I, I don't think there's anything more I can say about sex because we are British and we don't generally talk about it. And some people are embarrassed and some people are ashamed. I, I can talk all day about sex. Yeah? I, 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 
Um, well, I've kind of gotten over it, really. I've, I've gotten over it. I've, it. It's something which we were born from an act of sex. It's been going on for how long and all the rest of it. But religion stepped into place. And until death us do part, honour and obey, all forms of slavery, and we all buy into that as well for those that choose to get married. Guilt and fear. Right, guilt and fear to control the masses. But that's what it's like. You look at any other animal outside, what can animals teach us? You see a dog humping another dog, and you know, off they go, yeah? So, I'm, I'm not saying you do that. I'll tell you, there are communities on this planet where you don't even know who the father is of the children. The community support one another. So if I find a woman attractive, the community supports. That was Tuesday, now I'm on Wednesday or whatever. But, oh my God, religious values suddenly step in. Judgments are suddenly made. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, there's no such thing, but the point is the community supports that. The women would generally take care of the children, and the older generation would impart their wisdom onto the children. What do we have today? A convey belt system that we put our kids into. Don't get me going on that. <laughs> so, sex is a natural thing. For those of you that suddenly find you doing this, it's an invite to become a little bit more open to other opportunities and possibilities. Because as you know, whatever you resist will persist. And subconsciously, if your energies are going in that direction, then you will suppress your libido. It's, I don't think there's any more time I need to spend on this, because there are other things I'd love to talk about. But we, it has been around for how long? 3.2 plus million years? And we've all got an opinion about it. And opinions are like, and everyone has one. As Dirty <laughs> Harry once said. I was going to say assholes, but yeah. I realized that was on Deadpool. That's a quote from Deadpool. Opinion, opinions are like assholes, and everybody has one. <laughs> Dirty Harry. Dirty Harry. Sleep. Now, this is one major thing. I know we have this copy set up where it's 24 7, 365 days of the year. However, I'm going to say it's killing people because they're not getting to bed on time. Please remind me, what is the best time to go to bed? When you're tired. When you're tired? <laughs> right answer. I like what you're saying, though. Nine o'clock. Ten o'clock. I say ten o'clock. You've obviously watched some records. This is I know. Read the book Lights Out by Wiley. It's in your reading list. Sorry? You want me tonight? No, not before, not before sex. Okay. Two hours after the sun went down, we went down. So where we're presently living, as it starts to get darker, I need to go up there. No, sex is up. Um, during the winter period, we'd be going to bed about seven, seven thirty. Yeah. But during the summer, we'd be going to bed at eleven, twelve. As an average, we say, or well, I would advise you to go to bed at twenty-two hundred hours. If your cortisol, stress hormone, is high, your melatonin recovery hormone is going to be low. What I mean by that is these things, your photoreceptors on the skin, any light that shines on here, tells the body, get up, you're going to be fine, you need to move around. So cortisol is produced, the adrenals, at the top of the kidneys there. And they get you out of bed in the morning, or not for some people, give you my caffeine. And invite, instead of having that, go and have a cold shower. That will wake you up. And that will stabilize things probably a lot better. Okay? So sleep, it is on there, it is a new exam. Usually I find, like my grandmother, she's 93 years young, and she goes to bed around about 8.30. And she sleeps and gets up around about six. Is it what they say about being a child twice? Maybe so she sleeps about 12 hours, yeah? It's like a cycle. You certainly listen to your body, but if you dim the lights, you've got fresh air coming through, but no noise outside. And these just, and there's another, another page in it, things to be aware of. Away from electrical appliances, because some things we're not aware of. If you have a router system, a router system, a Wi-Fi system in your home, please turn it off. Okay? Some people even sleep with their phone. I don't have mine on me, but it's, it's in the bag. Research, read the book, Disconnect by Dr. Deborah Davis. Disconnect. If you have it in your pocket, you'll reduce your sperm count. It can lead to osteoporosis. It affects DNA. 
So just be mindful of that, just a cell phone. Um, so during the winter, dimly lights, two hours before bed, avoid bright lights. You people know this stuff. However, we get into habits of watching late night television because we all like David Letterman or whatever it is that you watch. Um, if you don't get a bit on time, obviously affect your hormones. If they're out of balance, then once again, you're going to gain weight, you're going to get fat, um, you're not going to feel good, you're going to be more emotional, you're going to bring on, with some research done, Canadian University, women who didn't have proper sleep patterns brought on breast cancer, an increase in breast cancer. Uh, in my opinion, that's another presentation, cancer is not a disease, it's actually a survival mechanism, but it gives you the opportunity to change your direction. Caffeine has a half-life, depending on how well your liver's working, of between four and six hours. So nothing after 3 p.m., I say 1 p.m., with caffeine. Alcohol, more please, no? Cortisol release, which will stress the hormones. Um, the glycemic index of the foods that you eat before bed. So if you go, to, I would say that you don't drink water or liquid after, say, 6 p.m., if you find you are waking up and having to go to the bathroom once or twice. Just try that, see if that works for you. But if you're eating a lot of carbohydrates or vegetables or fruits before, uh, like we do, before going to bed, that too could be a factor. Practice some meditation, deep breathing. You might have guided meditation. If you're very feminine, if you've got a feminine mind, men or women, when I say feminine, I'm talking about the energy, not as in woman. If then you might find a guided meditation would help. Reserve your bed just for sleeping and previous S. Um, that's boring, man. Find other places. We talked about the rabbit system going off, leave your window partially open. Yeah, meditation, slow breathing, in unchlorinated water. I recently had what's called a, an EPP, an Environmental Pollution Panel Test. Cost me a lot of money, but I'm worth it. And it, it showed some styrene in my results. And unfortunately, it's in the water. Now, we have a filter system, but that tells me that I need to get a reverse osmosis system put in. And if it's in me, it's going to be in my wife and my, and my kids. So, um, anything that you people would like to ask questions about this? Sleep, absolutely essential. I really saw that. Say again, sorry. Um, it's a carbon filter. It's about that big, and I buy it from a company local in Stavely called Bushy Tail. And I've had that filter system for years. But because uh, I was on the, speaking to the guy with my results over in, uh, I don't know if you've got Mark Shorts, Dr. Mark Shorts, he said that if I didn't have those readings on my EPP panel, I've actually got results here actually, um, then he would have known there'd be something wrong with my uh, immune system. And because I offered that, this test to my clients, um, it's a 300 pound test, 300, yeah, 300 pounds, 350 dollars. It's very detailed, um, it can be, uh, it can tell you a lot more about you, what's going on that you may be not aware of. Um, is it best that the bedroom as dark as possible? Thank you. Is that not on there? Again, with photoreceptors, cortisol is released, the cortisol is high, melatonin is low. Melatonin is a recovery hormone, police, reduce, um, at least from the pineal gland, the center of the brain, then your body won't fully recover from the activities of the day. And then, of course, then you get back on the front line again and then it gets on and on. And for most of us, it just takes time to compromise our immune system. We've got to work at it and we get good at it. So, taking responsibility, listening to your body. A simple tip here. Do we detect light up here? Detect light? Third eye. The third eye. The pineal, uh, pineal gland, yeah. You do, but you, you get it all over. So one of the worst things you could possibly do is wear sunglasses. Never wear sunglasses. You need the full spectrum of light to come through your eyes. Now obviously if you're skiing or you're sailing, you've got refracted rays, then wear sunglasses. But sunglasses will lead to all sorts of eye challenges and health challenges because the full spectrum of light needs to come through our eyes. Um, I have read much in the way of how that works with the light there. I just know that your eyes yeah. See illusions. <coughs> Dr. Quiet, silence is golden. Less is more. We're called human doings. Oh, not called human beings. 
but you get what I'm saying. So most of us chasing a paycheck, climbing the corporate ladder, living other people's dreams, stressing the mind, and this is what silence is. It's funny, you get this often. Imagine you were in a group together and somebody has to talk. And I used to catch this with myself until I started to become a little bit more aware of my own um, being. Always having to say something instead of just being silent and just sensing and observing. Practice it. Try it out. Because the ego, which stands for edging God out, wants to say chip in because you want to gain approval, which is the cycle I talked about before. Anything and everything you people do in this room will be to gain approval, whether it's with your parents, your grandparents, your kids, your next door neighbour. It's not right or wrong, or just be aware. Sense. Well, that's ultimately is, is to get approval from self. Yeah. Because you should always be impressed with what you do. But if you're living somebody else's dream, I'm not saying it's wrong working, doing, you know, climbing the corporate ladder or making, I'm not, not, that's not wrong. It's about whether it's aligned with what I call your soul or core values, things that you will not stand for. An example is if you're working for a bank, but you're aware of what goes on in banking and you're working for the bank. That would rest well with me. You can forget the money. Working for Monsanto, you just wouldn't, you know, just be aware. Yeah, but I need to pay for it. But you put your nails in your coffin through it. So spending more time doing, doing your own things. Um, time for silence. How many of you people would actually, when you wake up, you smile? You maybe have a shower, you start singing while you're in your shower before you go out to the sun and have some sex. I'll go through as reminders because they're all going to be in the exam. That you actually do a bit of form of meditation. Now what I mean by meditation, there's many different forms of it. I'm not talking about with your legs crossed in a lotus position and zenning out. I'm talking about you could be just staring at a flame or you could be staring at some water or you could just be at peace with yourself. Just have those few moments. Most of us are either having to read a book, read a newspaper, watch this. Just be aware of these things. They're not right or wrong. Do they serve us? So create the space each day just to silence your mind. And then it'll go off. Oh, I need to find that person. Just come back to your breathing or focus on the flame. Fishing is great for men doing that. <laughs> that is meditation. Oh, there's some examples. Um, three types of businesses to get involved in as a quick um, reminder. There's God's business. I say God. I, you know what I mean when I say God. I'm not religious in any shape or form. I, I don't support any religion. I spend a lot of time at the Buddhist temple over in um, Ulverston. It's not about Buddhism. It's just about switching off, recharging myself. So God's business would be the weather. And we get stressed about it. I can't believe that shitty weather out there. Um, no, it's the judgments. Or it would be other people's business, where we could gossip, I can't believe you, you know. Just be aware, whenever you're in God's business or other people's business, let it go, just drop it. And then there's your business. What you said and did, let it go. How could you improve the situation? What smart choices could you make right now? The only is the now. So those are the three businesses that I uh, was alluding to. There's some more information I'm going to go through. My, oh. I want you to remember these because they all come up in the exam, and I want you to pass with flying colours. So here's my question for you people. Of the list on there, how many of you feel you can go, yep, 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 oh, oh, yep, oh, <laughs> uh, yep, how many? How many of you people are going to leave here, because nothing worse than seeing somebody present something, their own passion or interest, and then open your cupboard, get tight with Kellogg's, so no, it's Kellogg's, it's Kellogg's, you know, before you go. Something different, that's what I mean, he's doing something different. Is there anything on here that you feel, you know what, I'm going to work on that. Anything on there. Anyone wants to share, say, you know what, you've got a point there, and I'm going to just make a few little changes. Because let me remind you, change is instant. It is not hard to change. Done. The greatest challenge is overcoming the mindset of stinky thinking, because the meaning still equals that, when it should equal that. So on there, what, is, what stands out for you that you feel, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on this, I'm going to find a Tai Chi class, or I'm going to really ask the question, because that's where it comes from. Tap into the resources. What is my greatest passion? 
what is my purpose right now? Because as far as I'm concerned, if you're a man, you want to leave a legacy behind you. What kind of legacy do you want to leave behind? Change the world. Change but it starts with you. Gandhi once said, become the change you want to see in the world. I believe, become the change you want to see in yourself. It starts, it's all about you. So on that list, those are the rebels at the back of whatever. Is there anything on there that you feel I'm going to work on that? Say again? The simple ones, this one. Any of them, or did you already know them and you're already practicing them? You've never thought about any of them? <laughs> Sleep, right, critical, absolutely critical for your well-being. You'll gain more and more weight the longer you go to bed. Between 10 and 12 is when the period of time of most of the repair is going on in your body. Is that still true with your vegetation in front of the hypnosis machine? <laughs> What's your hypnosis machine? <laughs> it's just your television. <laughs> your brain goes into an alpha state. Yeah. You will stop yourself going into a theta, delta, gamma, um, alpha, beta, theta, gamma, delta. There's about four of the wavelengths your brain won't go into if you're staring at the screen, yeah. or even if you're zoned out. You might think you're recovering, but any light on the body, it's going to be pitch dark, as Leon pointed out. It's going to be totally dark. If there's any light on the skin, there was some researcher, again, at American University, where they shot some light on the back of a student leg, and the student woke up, but it stressed the student as well. And all it was was a small, bright light just on the back of their leg. Constant or? No, it was just put on there for a few seconds, yeah. but it told the body, hold on a minute, the sun's come up. So for how long has the sun been coming up and then we've, we've moved? Yeah? So even the tiny light on a smoke alarm is a problem? On a smoke alarm? Yeah. That's usually red and flashes, isn't it? Or is it a bright light? Yeah. Okay, here's my tip then. If you can see your hand after half an hour, because that's how long it takes to get some maximum night vision, yeah? So as dark as it can be, if you can see your hand, it's too light. If you can't see your hand right in front of your face, then that's fine. Yeah. One of the worst things we can do is with our kids, because they think they feel safe, is we'll put a bed, a bed light there. Don't do that. Okay? It needs to be totally pitch dark. Same word, same word twice. Pitch dark. It's got to be pitch. Okay, can I ask you a question? Do you sleep with somebody? You don't. Do you have any animals? Okay. Is there anything that you feel that you can hold on to which is a lifeline for you to know that you are safe? It could be a stone, it could be a crystal, it could be a coin, it could be a, a present that your great great grandmother gave you, something that you value that if you anchored, this is a form of LP, that you anchored, you got it, but there was pleasure there, and you're safe. There's a in the room somewhere. If you can find something that, that is a value to you, this is when you leave here tonight, and if you can get excited but know that you are safe holding on to that, then practice, a little skill, that when the lights are out, that you're there. So if it ever happens, you just reach for it, and, and then all of instantly, the memory will come back that you're safe because you already anchored that before. So you've got to find something that you feel safe with. It could be a makeshift dog or a cat, I don't know. It could be a traction or whatever you feel you can touch, which anchors you, that is an example of something to overcome. If you've never done that before, then there's an invite. I think a mantra can help as well. Go with, the, go with the mantra, yeah. Ask for your healing, uh, comfort, strength. All those questions I asked for homework for you to do, 10 empowering questions, you know that when you wake up and the mind goes, you're not safe, you panic that you ask yourself the question. If you repeat a mantra at that time, it steadies people down. Okay, another wonderful idea from an enlightened being. <laughs> create a mantra that works yeah. for you and see how that is. So that's another example. Sorry? Oh, that affects women big time, that. Yeah, moonlight, moonlight is a different light. And the brightness of it would not be as often because of clouds and everything else. So that's natural. Um, I, my understanding is that's not a problem. Yeah. 
If anything that's natural, anything that's man-made, you know, Paris when they first brought in the lights, bring on the, you know, the cancer rates just went up a little bit. Margaret Thatcher used to survive two hours a night. I heard four. But whatever it is, you see, I mean, unless she's passed away, if the optimal lifespan is 120, 130 years, I don't think she got anywhere near that. And it's, I say, it's the quality of one's life. Because remember, the, the drugs come with so there are, as I explained to the gentleman over there, that there are 561,000 patented pharmaceutical drugs. 561,000. None of them cures of anything. None. At best, they treat the symptoms. They maintain the symptoms. Well, it keeps the disease alive, but never ever treat the disease or condition that has the person, but to the degree that can be coached, coach the person that has the labelled disease or condition. How does it get any better than this? It's all about you, your maximum potential. How many people have ever asked that? What's my maximum potential right now? Talking about the fracking, because I know that Ebony, more than a year ago, suddenly would have asked that question, stepped up to the plate and took on the fracking that's going on in your area, in our area, because, you know, part of this community as well. But what is your maximum potential? What could you do right now? Here's a question. How many psychotherapists does it take to change a light bulb? One, but the light bulb has to really want to change. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken for a light like being. What's his point? You've got to want to make the change. Anything and everything in our life has a meaning. What I mean by that is your motivation, it's an ego thing, I'd say your inspiration to want to make the change and to do it. So once the meaning changes, instantly you'll reap the rewards. And the way simple do it is the two motivators in life is pain and pleasure. That's why cocaine is the best selling drug on the planet. It makes copious amounts of money because it instantly removes that and instantly creates that. But to me, it equals that. I've never even taken it. But that's only because of how I've been indoctrinated about drugs. Socially acceptable ones or not. I've put on here that to heal thyself, life is a choice when you're conscious. For most of us, for 99 to 95, 95 to 99% of our day, we are robots. Acting out our subconscious minds. The subconscious is connected to the emotions. We can thank our parents because they do the best they could with the tools they have. Is it serving us? No. Time to wake up and have fun. I often put this on my Facebook. If you're not connected to me on Facebook, like Loz is here, they do. Because often I, I remind myself not taking life too seriously. Because I share a lot of stuff from vaccinations all the way through and how we need to wake up. But ultimately, you've got to follow your own bliss. This, this, I've got loads more slides, but on here, what would, at the moment, what would you like to leave behind? Or what would you like to take away from those things that I've just mentioned? Anything you think, yeah, I'm going to run with that. No, that's staying on the shelf. I'm not, I'm not interested. Anything. I want to do so a bit more speed. Movement. So those are two things that Rob's going to take away is movement, speed, because we were designed to sprint and then fall down. That's why well, we got eight by something. And silence. Well, thank you for that. Rob. Anyone else that wants to take away or leave behind? <coughs> Sleep. Oh, critical, thanks. Absolutely. It's so easy because once the bright light's there, we just carry on. I know I can work to 11 o'clock, but do I pay the price the next day? Yeah. I'm not firing all cylinders. I won't be doing my clients a credit or service if I don't. I mean, there are certain nights that I can be late tonight. But. I would like to uh, evolve my soul and understand the nature of my consciousness by asking a question. Mm. I'd like to see, of course, many uh, cancer cures. 
Right. I'd like to see the end of our money system. Mm -hmm. There's a few ones. So remember that what we focus on is what we get. As a quick reminder, Mother Teresa was once invited to an anti-war rally. She said, no, thank you, but I will go to a pro-peace. What's the difference? So, again, what are you focusing on? Whatever you focus on is what you get. So you're not resisting anything. Resistance is the first act of war. It starts in the mind. It empowers whatever you're fighting. Right. So we're not really fighting anything. Or if we are, that's it. I should really should go on do some more homework on and stuff like that, because I love this, the enlightenment stuff, and it's an ongoing process. This is one of my addictions. You know what, you guys know this, I'm addicted to sex and exercise, and I'm addicted to thinking. Those are my three addictions, and I'm honest about it. The tyranny of the intellect. Yeah, Mr. Cerebral. <laughs> Mental focus. Um, that's not an individual thing. I would say with mental focus, who's benefiting from it? Whatever you focus on, that's what you get. So I, my invite is to find, again, your passion or your purpose, and then share it, whatever it is, to those that want to listen. So if I can say that creative knowledge is something that's part of the feminine energy, and it's something which I believe is dumbed out of us at school. To follow a system. Yeah. I, I don't see creativity as a knowledge. It's an intuition. It's a, it's a gift from really? the universe. It's, it's yeah. comes from somewhere and, and it wanders into it. comes from nowhere. Creativity. And it will be connected to being in service to others. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Who's heard of Sir Ken Robinson? Hands up. Sir Ken Robinson. Yeah? John's heard of him. Google him. Sir Ken Robinson did a fantastic TED, TED talk on uh, creativity and how it's lost. It's actually, uh, they've got it animated on YouTube actually, it's beautiful. But he's just such a funny man. He's, a, he's an Englishman, he's, he's living in the States now. And he's dealt with education for all his life. And you watch it and you go, oh my God, what are we doing to our children? And he gives so many examples to it, it, it makes me laugh. Right. He is an incredible man. Well, you, you know more than me about it, but I've, I've only watched a few of his recordings, and I'm, I'm just, he's incredible. It's Sir Ken Robinson, he's a, he's a British man. All right, I, I only know the, the things that he has, and I don't know his background. Okay, let's move on then. There is, these are some of the things, there are other things that I do, working with people. It's always an invite. Those are some free TV channels, which I've got 192 on there. I'm not sure if that's still running, actually, or if they've taken it off. I've got about 60 odd on there. <laughs> Further bedtime reading. Um, that's a nice one. Well without cancer. Um, that's good. Let me see. So when you look at what's the body made of, that's it. How many of you guys do that? Two percent carbohydrates, and yet how much you stuff down your, your throat? <laughs> Most people don't eat enough of that. Yeah, but fat's made of some water, as is protein. Say again, sorry. The fat's made of some water, as is the protein. So uh, brain people brain say that eighty percent body water, seventy-five, ninety. You get different one every day. So it's, it's, you know. This is an average. Um, a baby is probably about 75, 80. And then as we get older, it could be, as they say, as well as 50. So just as an average. Great Chinese problem. Bit of homework. Um, John will have seen this before that you can do for yourself. And this one's just as powerful as anything else. Somebody, the gentleman who's now left, um, he wanted to know about food. So what I could get him to do if he was here, I reminded him to write down or to put little crosses on those foods he has, which are Mother Nature's. So Mother Nature's would be things like with eyes foods that you chase after with a bow and arrow, chicken, poultry, fish, you know, and so on. 
uh, apples, uh, fruit, vegetables, all that is Mother Nature's food. It's been on the planet for thousands of millions of years. Party foods, what kind of party foods? Crisps, sausage rolls, sandwiches, you know, all that. That's party food. Yeah, junk. Dolls, chocolate. Well, you're probably over here now. Go and judge yourself with this. Addictions, if you can't have a day without doing something like chocolate or caffeine or whatever it is, then it's an addiction. And all you need to do throughout the week is just put a little cross in that box. This is what you guys can do. This is empowering. And then you can tally it up. There's an example here. 60% of the nature's food, 25 and so on. So then my question would be, well, what percentage do you want each area to be? If you say, well, I want to eat more of the nature's food, I want to eat less party food and obviously less addiction. Okay. So what changes are you going to make in your life? You do it, that's the empowering bit. I see a lot of people here, a lot of people who go and visit various practitioners who go and teach you how to fish. I want you guys to do this. Record what you eat and when you eat. Those are the two factors, what and when. And generally speaking, if I'm working with somebody who's been labelled with cancer, they don't eat four hours before going to bed. So there's nothing pretty much in the furnace. I call this the first brain. It's working with the individual, doing the best. So at the top of the chart here, getting to know your local farmers, as organic as it can be. Even organic is still fall short of what's because of poor husbandry, because we've taken more than we put back in the soil. Because you ask any man, he'll tell you the most important thing on this planet is the first six inches. <laughs> Seriously, you ask any man, he'll tell you first six inches, because they know that, in the soil. That's the most important thing we have on this planet. And it's reducing. And the next big world war, who knows what it's going to be about? Nope. Water. That's going to be the next big war. It's going to be on water. Fresh water. So, um, but we, we can, this is all about you as an individual making the smartest choices you can make and understanding to, well, okay, that is an addiction and just let it go. But if you want to change it, you've got to make those changes. In other words, you've got to change the meaning of what it is. And if you cut it out of your life, it leaves a void. You need to fill that void with something. So if it's not caffeine, what are you drinking? Chocolate. <laughs> Coke. Yeah. Simple one that you can do. It costs you nothing. If you want to find out, this is a simple form of kinesiology, if your body agrees with the food. I went on holiday, as you do, with my wife, a few months back there, before the second one was born, and I bought some orgasmic Welsh cheese. Loved it. Got home, and you know, it took me three days to figure this out. I've never had a headache in my life, but my left eye just felt heavy. It wasn't a pain, it just felt heavy. It was almost like I had a mini stroke or something. It just, and it wasn't, I didn't realise it was the cheese. And yet, I enjoyed eating it. But if I'd done the pulse test, I would have figured it out. I didn't, because I liked the taste of it. So where in your life are you doing that? You're chucking stuff in that the body doesn't want, doesn't like, because you're addicted to it. And you're putting what else in your coffee. Because in my opinion, I'm not biased. The most precious thing you people have on this planet is your health. Because once you've got your health, which actually equals your wealth, you can then pass that information on to your children. Not by telling them, just by your being. So, again, send me an email, I'll send you the form for this, for the pulse test, yeah? There only is one, molecular chaos, that's what it is. There's only two ways of creating it. John knows this, don't you, John? British average diet, standard American diet, caffeinated, refined, alcohol, additive, or processed products. 95% yeah. of what they sell in booths as the Morrison is dead dysfunctional crap. It's got a shelf life and it tastes good because it has a class A drug called sugar in it. I'll wake up. What do I do? Does your body require relaxing? Stopping you from eating authentic vital you. What do you love and celebrate? That's a good one. What do you love and celebrate about yourself? Here's a question actually. What does fun look like to you? 
But give me an example of the joy or fun. Best language in the world, laughter. So, either listening to a comedian or being in the environment of people laughing. Yeah. Do we spend our day doing that? No. Should spend some moments doing that, even if you look in the mirror and do it. <laughs> so whatever it is, whatever fun looks like to you, because most of us being British, and I know this, we will wait until we're retired. The kids leave the home. The mother-in-law. Yeah? Don't wait. All waiting causes suffering. Do it now. That is the invite. Do not hold back. And what others think of you has got to do with you. What others perceive of you has got nothing to do with you. I'm not saying you don't listen to them, but that's their opinion. Who's heard of a poron upon a prayers? Yeah? Funny man. That's what it is. Whatever it is. And if you say that to yourself as a mantra to reach enlightenment, you feel so much more peace. You don't even need to focus on your breathing. Any questions? Magnus. It's Apart from, from that one there. <laughs> if a type of food makes you fart a lot, would you say it was bad for you? Smart question. No, it's Here's the deal. I really need to listen and hear this. Okay? It is normal and natural to break wind up to 15 times a day. I'm being that accurate. And again, it's one of those I took, I know one of my mentors took on a client who went to the bathroom every 30 days. The gentleman is out here like this, but as a child, they were told they had to, this is called a mimetic amine, yeah, rhymes with cream, read the book, The Selfish Gene by Richard Dawkins, it was passed on his family that on a specific Sunday, they had to stay in the bathroom until they did a number two, and they weren't able to come out to that. So they, he conditioned himself from childhood. He was then passing that on to his kids as well. The most constipated could possibly be because of, right? However, and I've recently asked this, and I, I answer that sincerely, is because I've just completed a training program understanding what's called the functional fully good protocol, how everything works, just this weekend down in London, and I was pleased when I was looking out for it between 10 and 15 times a day, breaking wind is natural. I'm not saying to do that, I'm just saying it's natural. However, here's the deal. If you eat a lot of pulses and beans, and you do not have the right enzymes to break it down, then you need to vacate the room. Then, then you can either get the enzymes to do that, or go eat that type of food. However, a lot of people also, depending on the smell of it, because the smell should be earth-like. If it's like, oh my god, I'm out of here, then the chances are, assuming that it was dysfunctional, wasn't some dysfunctional product, you've got parasites and fungal issues. Join the masses. I'm glad I've answered that question. Can anyone give me a simple one? <laughs> Unless the body is out of balance. Okay, dis ease. There are, what I'm aware of, 12 fundamental homeostatic controls which allow us to thrive. Let me give you a few examples. The pH of your body. Yeah? The stomach should go down as low as that. Outside, the small intestines could be as high as that. So the body works within twice a day, it should go through two cycles of alkaline and acid, twice a day. If it doesn't, you've got to have the challenge, and those can be measured. So, autonomic nervous system, sterile hormonal balances, neurotransmitters, which incidentally up to 80% of neurotransmitter serotonin is produced in the stomach, assuming that that's functioning properly. 60% of Dopamine is produced, most people think neurotransmitters, yeah? No, this is the brain number one, that's number two, okay? Um, the oxidative system, there's, uh, th there's 12 different what we call fundamental homicide controls. Now you cannot possibly get sick or ill without affecting them. However, one person could be labeled with arthritis and have a pH problem, but the person over here has an autonomic nervous problem. But unless you actually find out 
Treating that person with the, whatever you want to treat them with is not the way. Never ever treat the disease or condition. Now cancer comes about ultimately fast tracking through it all because oxygen doesn't get into the cell. Why does oxygen get into the cell? Because your fundamental homeostatic controls are out of balance. How come they're out of balance? Because you're stressed, got lots of thinking going on, your environment is toxic, you've decided to apply things to your skin that you wouldn't eat, your diet is pretty shocking, you're not drinking enough water, you're breathing, well you can affect your pH right now by shallow breathing, yeah? That can affect the pH big time. Um, your sleep circadian rhythms, well let's not even go there because they're out of whack. You get where I'm going with this. So you need to look at the environment. So oxygen's not getting into the cell. The cell can't function properly. It will function at a 16th of its capacity. So most people that have been labeled with cancer, well before they're given the, you've got cancer, because everyone in the room has, by the way, right now your body's producing cancer cells, right now. But a simple system of apoptosis, has anyone heard that term? Apoptosis means cell death, it's in the exams right now. Apoptosis, right? Can't occur because the environment of the cell is not conducive for that to happen. However, the body, being quite smart, is allowing you to drive on the Imagine you've got three lanes, four lanes, if you're down under the five lanes, and you're in your car before you asleep at the wheel, yeah? You go over, and all of a sudden you go along the sleeping policeman, yeah? Because if you do not wake up, game over, you die. But if you wake up and you change your direction, you bring more balance into your life, you can then overcome the label you've been given. But here's the tip bit though, assuming that you haven't gone beyond the tipping point with cancer. So cancer will metastasize in the weakest area of your body that needs the most concern. Because cancer doesn't kill you. It will metastasize, keeping you alive as long as possible, until you make the right change or distinction in your life. And unfortunately, the organ, let's just give it a name, liver, which has got the cancer or the carcinogenic cells in, now there's too many of them, the liver can't function properly. So then you may perhaps die, it'll affect other organs. It's, we work in isolation, but the body doesn't work in isolation, it works as a whole. So cancer comes about through poor environmental lifestyle choices. Some people will say, well, now hold on a minute, like this happened, child of three, four, five, not leukemia, all that happened, because they were born with a deficiency of micronutrients. So if you imagine you've got a health bank account and you've got deposits and all this, and over here is vitamin A, vitamin B, I know we can split these things up, but they're all, they're all one. There's vitamin C and all that stuff. When they were born, they were deficient in a few of these. Magnesium was well there. And then they were fed a cereal, because the parents are cereal killers, they didn't realise that though. And they were fed more sugar because it's really hard. I see kids with you know three year olds drinking coke. Well if Bin Laden, allegedly, if he wanted to kill as many Canucks or that, he wouldn't be he wouldn't be bloody flying planes around, he'd be having shares of Coca-Cola. Right? That's he'd kill far more people. Three over oh, three thousand five hundred people die in the US every year just through drinking coke. More than that die from the not sociable stuff like the actual cocaine itself. So Deficiencies are obviously created. So cancer is a, as I say, it's a survival mechanism because what it does is it allows you to live a little bit longer. But you've got to make some changes. But for most of us, we're so numbed out, and you have to, please don't argue with me when I say this, your headache was not caused by the absence of an aspirin. You can't argue with me, that is the truth. It was caused by dehydration, lack of macro micronutrients, pharmaceutical drugs that you're taking, Magnesium deficiencies, it, what, you, it was caused by something. But it wasn't from an absence of white willow bark and the other crap they put in it. Yeah? So, but you were used to using those kind of chemicals or whoever has been given cancer. So they've been taking all the pharmaceutical drugs before then. Their energy levels have been low and they haven't listened to their body and made the necessary changes so that the body can do what it's naturally programmed to do, keep them healthy. So when you think about it, has Mother Nature created this evil thing called cancer to finish us off? No, we've done that by not taking responsibility and making poor environmental and lifestyle choices. We live conscious of the fracking, we have a router system, we have the list goes on. I have paperwork, that thing, I get people, my clients to fill out, so I can have a greater understanding 
what distinctions are they making? It's almost like I live their life for 10 days. It takes them over 10 days to fill the paperwork out. Now, if a woman hasn't gotten over or was abused, raped, whatever, when she was a child or whatever age, and she hasn't forgiven herself, which is always the last thing usually, and the person that did it, then that in itself could fast track cancers around this area or perhaps even breast cancer. Yeah? So we do know that the thought process is absolutely key. Well, we were discussing before, over 95% of all reasons why you go to the doctor is because of stress. So no one can create cancer in their life without mental, emotional, intuitive or spiritual stress. So I get excited when clients come to me with cancer because they're usually open to making some changes. They've obviously been onto my channel, they've found a little bit more information about me, and I, I don't always take all of them on because I haven't got the time and I don't think they're ready for the work that I do. And it's an invite for them to make changes. And it's, it doesn't have to be invited, but it could just be as simple as getting to bed on time. We'll start there. Drinking more water. Just simple little things, yeah, after we've done all the tests. But cancer is nothing, nothing to be feared even though one in two of us in the room is going to get it. And it's not me. You've got to die of something anyway. <laughs> but it will be game over. How many people do you know die in their sleep? Very rare now, isn't it? Instead, they go many, many, usually decades of crippling. You know, I say to people, why wait to become disabled? Do something about it now, when, when you can. Because it's far easier to prevent than to reverse. But it is reversible. But it, a lot of it is about changing their state of mind getting over their stuff. Get over yourself and get out of your way. Does that kind of help? So oxygen doesn't go into the cell. If it can't go into the cell, but cancer can survive in an anoxic and an oxic environment. So it's not about alkalizing the body, per se. Because like I said, it goes through cycles, in that throughout the day, two cycles. But what it is about is bringing more balance into your life and being good to yourself and treating yourself well. Just me. They're misinformed about how the gut works. There are, I can't, the number is something like, I don't know, 26,000 diet books. Look at the last, look at the first three letters, they kill you. Everyone is different. The diet that works for you is different for the gentleman on your left and for the lady on your right. Everyone's different. But you can listen to your body and you can give it what it wants. I've introduced the pulse test to you. But what you can do is eat more. Mother Nature's foods of meat, fish, get it treated well, because if it, is, if it hasn't been treated well, it will affect you. Vegetables and fruits. Then we need to find the etiology or root cause of that. Okay. And you, in other words, we need to, there's various tests that need to be performed, and then you need to start putting in, there might be supplements, supplementary food at first, to, to overcome that. But what you can do is stop the blocking factors, and the blocking factors is the sad stuff. The standard American, British average, caffeinated. Stop eating wheat, it'll kill you. You need some raw because there are enzymes on there, and enzyme meaning is life. We need, we need enzymes, okay? We've got the finite supply of the body. So you need some raw, but you also need to cook some food because those people that are food rawists, they eat just raw food. Their quality of life, eventually, because it's so challenging to the body to, to break it down. So steaming food is good. But you need to find what works for you, and everyone's different. But the two main things, you need to eat the foods right for you and you need to find the right macronutrient ratio. What do I mean? Fats and proteins versus carbohydrates on a plate of food. So you feel satiated for at least two hours. No highs, no cravings, apart from sex, or anything else like that. Then you know that you found them. But, rotate, this is in the exam, so remember this, rotate the foods. 72 hours. So, if you had porridge on Monday, or it's a dysfunctional food for most of us, you don't have it again until Friday. 
If you have chicken on Tuesday, you don't have it again until Saturday, rotate. Why am I saying that to you people? Because it takes up to 72 hours, assuming you're not constipated, for that food to touch every side of the body and then to be released. You might really start with my passion, wouldn't you? <laughs> I've been doing this for nearly 25 years, you see, with food and nutrition, and to find out what foods are right for people, and everyone's different. But you know what? Sometimes I find it's easier for me to get you to change your religion than to change your diet. I'm not joking when I say that. That's how, because it's a very personal thing. Just like people that are addicted to their sports. You know, they support Manchester United or Liverpool. Try and get them to change <laughs> zip over my dead body. Or religion. You know? Very passionate about it. So it's about letting go. You know, if you have a chronic condition, you know what isn't working for you. Any other questions? Does taking baking powder a short step to alkalizing? It will alkalize the body, but what you need to understand, sir, is that everything is going to go through into the stomach. And if you are taking something of high alkalinity, which is sodium bicarbonate, then that's going to affect the pH of your stomach. And it doesn't mean, nice idea, that by going and it will alkalize everything else. Again, nice idea. So, if the pH on Venus return is 7.45, then Magnus thinks you need to consume water that has about 309 parts per million, which everyone water does. I'm not saying drink from a plastic bottle or drink any, that's just one example. In other words, it contains mineral solids and it has a pH which is neutral. So, if you did that, you could try it, but mainly people who are over, and I'm not insulting you hopefully when I say this, people who are over 50 usually have pH challenges with their stomach. And there's a simple test I can perform using a, a white capsule, you pull the string out, fasten the string here, you then swallow it, lay on your side for 10 minutes, I pull, pull the string out with a white piece of paper and we go over it and you can see how the pH of your stomach is, quite simply. So, because most people, when they go to their doctor, they've got acid influx going on. The doctor said it's, it's too acidic, you, you need to take tons or don't do that. I would say one out of a hundred is because it's too acidic. So in other words, 99 people, it's because of hypo hydrochloria, not because of hyper. But we do the test to find out. I don't like to guess. But no, just drinking soda by carbon is not a wonderful thing to do. Just like drinking coke, which is very acidic, phosphoric acid. Can anyone ask an exciting, yeah. delightful, loving question? Well, it's there. Um, I suppose you could sum this up, couldn't you? You were taught tonight because modern life is killing us. Um, right. Uh, by accident or design? Design. Well, well let, let me come with my opinion on this, right? My opinion is, because of what we're driven to, in other words, have a passion or a purpose, chase a paycheck, make some money, a lot of us have become blinded by what we're truly doing to the greater effect in affecting others. So if you got somebody working for Monsanto and spelt it out to them, like, I sometimes have contacts with a friend who knows all about my passion. I've mentioned many times about him eating bread, right? He's still eating bread. How many times do I need to tell him? And he's already been, he's already had a myocardial infection. And it's not just about bread, there's other things he does. You've heard the saying, when the student's ready, the teacher or master appears. Does that say it? No. When the student's ready, we're all students, he or she starts to listen. That's it. And then we make the smart choices. So what's happening is people are climbing that corporate ladder, having to pay for this massive house and swimming pool that they've got, not looking at the bigger picture of how it's affecting everybody else. Because you and I have been brought up that we need to make money and become successful. Become a CEO of or whatever. I'm not saying it's wrong, it just doesn't serve. So what we've lost is this community spirit of asking the question, how can I be of service as opposed to what's in it for me? Most people go, well, what's in it for me? I want some money. Rob will know this with the way I do all the presentations. I give my presentations sometimes for free. Not because I'm not valuing myself or prostituting myself, because I believe this information is got. I've got 190 
94 things on a YouTube channel. This information, again, do your own homework. Don't buy into any of my stuff. Find out your own truth. Now, it could be seen, there's no such thing as a conspiracy, by the way, that the, these people are trying to control and manipulate. That's come about through understanding a bit more about how marketing works. And that we can, because we are all pretty well docile. And what I mean by docile is not stupid. Look up the word docile, it means willing to obey. And that's what we do, we're just willing to obey, to fit in, to, to gain approval in that circle of friends or community. So the more of us that switch off books and stop reading, that's how we vote powerfully. And then we don't need to fill our minds with that BS. What I mean by BS is a belief system that doesn't serve us. If I was the new world order, if I was part of this room and the was running the planet, ideally, I would want a population to do exactly that. Yeah. And so it could be seen as that. From one point of view, I don't, I'm not arguing with you, it could be seen as that's what they're doing. But I believe a lot of the people, obviously, that are working for them are unconscious. They're not aware of it. It's not malicious. In my opinion, it's not a malicious thing. They're useful idiots. And it could be seen as, but remember, once John remembers this, I gave a presentation one on how to prevent and reverse all chronic diseases, including cancer. It was in uh, Grange. And I came in and I took my clothes off. Now, some people walked out, <laughs> and some people laughed, which was good. And one lady said, John, remember this, one lady said, if my husband wears those boxer shorts, well, he have a body like you. And that broke everything, right? <laughs> but what's my point? It's about the judgments. And all I do, because it's a huge topic, is what judgmentalness. We're always following these judgments. Yeah, I'm better than you are. No, you're not. I'm, I'm worth more. No, you're not. We are all one. And so I think also this, it, it, it's, it's an insidious thing that we live by what we call the golden rule. Do to others as we have done. Well, what a stupid rule that is, because everyone's different. How about the, the platinum rule, do to others as they would have done? Yeah. A simple example is, I like my back having a massage, you like my feet being tickled. Well, I didn't know that until I started to get to know myself better in your company. So it's a, just about letting and accepting things, but realising to play your part. But when you get angry about something you don't want, you will create more of what you do not want. And you will find it. Where the glasses? We've got the gentleman before who saw all the features of life. All you need to do, I, I conditioned him, I brainwashed him, to delete every single other thing come apart from the red seats and to focus on brown. Just like that. And that's what's going on now. And I'm, I'm not saying I'm any more enlightened than anyone else is, but I just vote with where I put these things. And these and that, obviously with the television side, and I think, think globally but act locally and just do your bit and put your energies in what you want to blossom and to flower as opposed to what you don't want to. There's no reason to bring anger and all the rest of it. I'm not doing a, a gandhi thing on it, it's just a case of you finding and discovering yourself. How can you be of service in your community? Fantastic job, I'm just saying this, whatever he's doing with the, with the fracking side. Well, for you, it might be picking up the plastic bags or something else that's damaging the killing the whales over in Whatever it is, find that passion and share it to those that want to listen. But I don't think there's anything big going on other than people tuning into the wrong freaking station. That's right. I like that sense worth. Sense worth. Thank you all very much indeed. Um, I am open to feedback and things that you want to leave behind. So if there is anything that you feel that I, like we had a chat before, I've about something, because I said the vibrations of light. And this gentleman corrected me and said, well, actually, vibrations of sound. Or energy. Or energy. Because everything's energy. And I don't disagree with what you're saying, because the reason I use the word light is because I'm a visual person, and I would say that he's more auditorial, which is more to do with listening. So we're all different in how I explain, but I wouldn't, you know. But I like that kind of feedback, and sometimes I might say something out of but normally. Uh, in the beginning was the word. That's right. That's all word, and the word was good.